Welcome back, Photoshop students. We are going to discuss some new tools today. Um, these are located here in the toolbar. We're going to talk about using the pen tool, um, the difference between the path selection and the direct selection, working with creating shapes. So these, these three areas here are located in your toolbar. Now, as we've already pre previously discussed um, a little bit, is the difference between vector graphics and bitmap graphics. Vector graphics is what we are going to be building today, and there are these tools in Adobe Photoshop that allow us to create and tweak vector graphics. Vector graphics, as you recall, are mathematically calculated paths that create a shape. And this differs from the bitmaps that you might be working with in a photograph. In a photograph, it's made up of a bunch of different pix pixels, as we've looked at previously. But the vector graphics are mathematically calculated. Let's take a look and see what they actually look like and compare the differences. So we can create a variety of shapes simply by clicking on the Shapes tool selecting the type of shape we'd like, which we can also choose up here in our tool options bar. And once we decide on a shape, we can create a variety. I've created some here. Um, here's an example, a triangle, an octagon, and you know, these were just stock shapes that were created by selecting one of these. Here I can select the ellipse tool and I can choose a color and I can click and drag on the image window and I created an ellipse. Now notice that this object here looks different than the previous objects we've made and notice how this time it had nothing to do with the red color I selected. That's because I had a style selected. There's a number of different styles that come available to you in Photoshop as well. And when one of those styles is selected, it overrides the color. To go back to the default and then select a color on the tool options bar, you can do so here. I can change colors quickly and easily. I can also change the color by double clicking on the th layer thumbnail of the shape I just made and bringing up my color picker there as well. So there's several ways to change the color or the style of a shape once it's made. This area in here is for creating compound shapes, such as this shape here and we'll go over creating compound shapes in another and separate demonstration. But here is a look at a, a compound shape in which I've created this shape using two triangles. And that is known as a compound shape. So there's a variety of ways that you can combine shapes to create a compound shape located here in the toolbar. Let's take a look at one of the shapes and how it was made. Very quickly and briefly, the triangle is three-sided and it's a three-sided shape and it's a polygon. So if I choose the polygon tool and I set my sides number to three, then I'm going to get a triangle. Of course, if I set it to eight, then I would get an octagon. So you do have control of the number of sides that you can create with the polygon. What if I wanted to adjust this shape in some way? I select the layer of the sh shape I want to adjust, and then if I want to move that object around or move that path, I just select here the selection tool, the path selection tool, and then I can move that object around. What if I wanted to make one end of the triangle a little taller? Right now, everything looks pretty equidistant. So I can choose the direct selection tool and if I click on one of the points it changes it to a black dot as opposed to a white or unfilled dot. 
and if I click and drag that point, then I can control the shape a little bit further by just clicking and dragging on the point. So that's the difference between the path selection tool and the direct selection tool. The path selection tool selects the entire path while the direct selection tool really selects the details. I actually have to click away and now click on the shape to make it active and then select the individual point that I want to adjust. And this becomes very relevant when we start working with the pen tool. So I'm going to move this shape down here and turn these off. The pen tool allows us to freeform draw shapes. And we can freeform draw shapes that are known as either open or closed. Let's look at an example. This is an open shape and this is a closed shape. And what separates the two is if I use the pen tool and I start drawing, clicking and dragging on my picture window, then you can see if I don't go back to the origin or the starting point of that shape, notice how when I hover the cursor over the, the origin of that shape, that the pen turns to a tiny little, it has a little O icon next to the pen. That lets me know that that was the origin of that shape. If I don't go back to the beginning and click on the origin point, I have what is called an open shape. However, if I click, continue clicking and go back to the origin, now I have closed the shape. So let me just delete that here. Notice how I can also separately delete the vector mask that is created on the layer separate from the shape 3 color, which is rather interesting. So let's just make a closed shape so you can see that happening. A smaller closed shape as I click and drag here on the picture image window. Get back to the origin and click and that closes the shape. What's the importance of closing a shape? If you have an open shape, um, sometimes when you try to fill them you're going to get sort of bizarre behaviors um, that may be unexpected. And so it's important to close the shape as a habit. I can, as I did with the other shapes. I can use the direct selection tool to click on and select an individual point and click and drag. Now notice this point has something interesting. It has two little handles that look like barbells on the end of that point. These handles I can also click and drag on and they allow me to adjust the angle at which that point sits and how much depth there's going to be to these to these vector paths how round or straight those vector paths will be but what if you have a point like this that doesn't give you the handles well you're going to need to convert you have to convert this. It's now a corner path. It's a corner point. You need to convert it to a point that has handles if you want to make it more flexible. And to do that, I will go to the pin tool, click and hold, and come down to the convert point tool. And if I click and drag on convert point, you can see that I've changed it from a very striking angle to a soft angle. And I get those handles again that with the direct selection tool I can maneuver. Oops, I gotta select it and then I can maneuver it 
to soften or change the adjustment of that shape. Other options within the pen tool are adding or subtracting anchor points. So let's add an anchor point. Let's find, for example, let's open up this triangle and perhaps I've decided that I want more points on this path than I already have. I can select the path to make it active and you can see that my little icon has turned to a plus and that plus sign lets me know that I can now click on this path and add a point. Click and add a point, click and add a point, and after I've added those points then I choose my direct selection tool and I can pull those points. And you can see I have a more rounded triangle now. And of course I can still click on the handles and drag them to make further adjustments to this shape. You can also, of course, delete an anchor point tool. And so you can delete an anchor point and now see how the cursor now changes to a little minus sign. And that means that as I click on any of these points, they're going to disappear. So you can add anchor points and delete anchor points. You can also convert anchor points. The freeform pen tool is a pen tool that just it it tries to simulate or pay attention to as if you had it works better with Wacom tablets as if you had a pen in your hand. It just tries to follow what the the mouse or the cursor is doing. And of course that makes a lot more sense if you have a little more control like you would have with a, a tablet. I'm just going to delete those. Now the move tool can work on these shapes but you have to actually select the various shapes and kind of move them about. But they must first be selected in order to move them. So there's a lot of similarities. I mean, you still have control over these shapes. Um, you can apply layer blending methods. You can actually add layer styles. To these shapes. Just like you would any other layer. You can see I've got a drop shadow effect uh, applied to this layer. And so with the creation of these shapes, you can start to make more interesting kind of depth. And it can come in very handy when you're building web objects like a button. Take a look at this example. Here's a button that I made, very simply. I used the rounded rectangle tool. And I simply clicked on the image window to draw a rounded rectangle. And then I just applied some layer styles to that shape to make it appear that it's sort of popping off the page. Or that it's embedded in the page if you have in this case. And so you can play with layer styles and create actual objects that can be interacted with in various designs. But it actually comes with some stock designs. Let's compare another button that was made with one of the stock styles that can be found up here in your Shape Options toolbar. Here's a button and notice how it has nothing to do with the color. We've already seen this style used before. It has nothing to do with the color that was selected 
but it has all of these effects applied to this layer to create that, you know, it really looks like a button that pops off the page, something that you could push. It's the giant candy-like button. So here is that style that can be employed. When you select a style and you click and drag on the image window, you too can create quickly and easily a stock standard button shape. So it's kind of cool to know that those styles are there and you can also go on the web and download additional styles and append them to the style drop down menu. Let's see if there's if I have any styles that I can append here. I think I have downloaded some glass buttons. So we're going to append the glass button styles here. You can see I have a lot more that I can choose from. And as I click on the various styles, I change the color and effect of those glass buttons. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with these shapes as you create them in the image window. Now this is a little bit different from creating a compound shape and we'll talk about how to create a compound shape and how to further control points using your direct selection tool. But this concludes your introduction to working with shapes and the pin tool and also understanding the difference between the path selection tool which selects the path in general, the entire path, versus the direct selection tool, which only selects a specific point of the object. I encourage you to experiment, play, create different shapes, apply layer styles to them, and just kind of see what, you've, what you can do.